How do you take your channel from pretty much nowhere to almost everywhere in one of the oldest and most competitive niches on YouTube? Well, literally, it's all down to you. Howdy, howdy, folks. Welcome back to vidIQ and a video all about how you, the viewer, are often underappreciated by us, the creators. In fact, some quick back of a napkin math suggests 82.7% of creators never actually invite their audience to participate in their content. But rest assured folks, this video is going to be different because many of you have already participated in it without even realizing. More on that a little later. But first, I wanna ask you a question. How often do you read the comments on your videos? I still read and reply to as many comments as I can in the first couple of hours after a video goes live. I'm probably doing that right now if you're one of the first to watch this video. So go on, test me. Diving into the comments is a tried and tested method of engaging with and building your community. And by me asking you this very question at the beginning of this video is a classic example of making sure the creator puts you, the viewer, at the center of the creator's attention. But how do you take this audience to the next level? From feeling as if they're associated with the content to a belonging, a part of the content. Howdy, howdy, everyone. Nate from Channel Makers here. Bet you weren't expecting to see me here now, were you? You did introduce me, right, Rob? Did you introduce me, Rob? Uh, nope. I should probably do that. Nate is a YouTube educator just like myself, and in the course of a single year, his channel has gained almost 70,000 subscribers and just shy of 3 million views. And the key to his success is by being, well just really mean. I am going to continue to roast this until this point gets in. Why would I want to sit here and watch another 22 minutes of the same stuff? That's immediately a big cringe factor. No, no, stop it. Stop. That's absolutely archaic and outdated. It's useless. You don't even know what you're talking about. That's a bit harsh especially when it's edited out of context. Now, in reality, Nate was encouraged to roast videos from his community because they asked him to do it. And there is a really strong possibility that you, yes, you watching this, are doing a lot of the things that I'm about to roast. Over the course of a year, Nate has developed a symbiotic relationship with his audience. The relationship is so well established between audience and creator that the benefits are mutually exclusive. To demonstrate how he cultivates a relationship with his audience, watch the first 15 seconds of a typical Nate video. Howdy, howdy, everyone. Nate here. Let's hang out for a little bit. I wanted to make this video because I care about you and I want to see your channel grow. And so I wanted to avoid a lot of the mistakes that I see happening, especially for smaller YouTubers, but even a lot larger YouTubers. That is seven relationship building moments in the first 15 seconds of a video. Ah, but who cares about that? Finally, you finally showed me the camera. This is a product review and we're two and a half minutes in of a 22 minute video. That's already a long video. All the information before this, completely useless. The product has a USB plug-in. Like, whoa. If you are sharing information that is so stupidly obvious, people are gonna leave. Kind of feels like you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> that will never work. Now, whether Nate is roasting viewers' videos or responding to long, heartfelt letters from his viewers, the key ingredient is that Nate always puts his audience first. And what's even more remarkable about this strategy is that Nate can do this at scale. Nate collects data, a lot of data, all from his very engaged audience and uses that data to educate that audience. It all goes back to that mutually beneficial symbiotic relationship. You know what? You're about to get a dose of some Nate data. So I actually pulled a sneaky on you and I ran a poll on vidIQ's channel behind the scenes. You thought it was Rob, but it was actually me. <laughs> now, which post was that Nate you ask? It was this one. How long is your typical video intro? Now, right off, we see something very interesting going on here. Almost half of you that answered this poll uh, said, I don't use intros at all in my videos. And as I scrolled through the comments here, there's definitely a reflection of this, I don't use intros in a general sentiment that intros are not good on YouTube anymore, or at the very least that they are on their way out. And the funny thing here is several months ago, I asked a similar question in my channel makers community and I asked what kind of beginning of video do you prefer on a channel you're watching? And by far the majority were 
non intros this one straight into video intros so that actually reflects pretty closely what i'm seeing from the results of this one that's much more recent it seems like content online on youtube or elsewhere online is tending towards more short to the point because our time we have so many things we could be doing our time is feeling more and more valuable the big question coming to mind for me is is an intro ever a good idea with all this trend towards shorter content should you ever do an intro in your videos? And I think I have an answer to that. But before I get to that, if you haven't already, I'm gonna invite you to like this video that you're watching right now. Rob has put a lot of effort into it. You know that just as well as I do. And in fact, Rob, if you're listening to this, of course you're listening to this, Rob just hit 1 million subscribers on vidIQ. And coming from me genuinely, that is totally deserved. So if you haven't already, like this video. But back to this question of, is an intro ever a good idea? I think one of the best ways to answer this is by reading off this comment from the Brickaniac. Depends on what you mean by intro. If you mean an animation or something like that, I don't use one. But if you mean like, hey everyone, then usually up to 15 seconds, but I'm shortening it. And I love that the Brick Aniac brought this up because really clarifying here, there's a intro that is the typical, what we think of an intro, like a music, certain, uh, you know, a splash screen, whatever it is, versus a hook. And they are very different things. So a good question to be addressing is, do I need an intro versus a hook? In my opinion, a hook or some compelling, strong reason to watch the rest of your video within the first 30 seconds of a video is always a good idea. The biggest pointer I would give if you were to come to me and say, hey Nate, should I do an intro on my channel? It would be this. Why is the audience there? Why are they watching your content? If it's to get a specific answer from your video, either don't do an intro or make it as short as humanly possible. I'm talking like two seconds. But the opposite side of the spectrum there is, are people there to spend time and hang out? And if that's the case, an intro or a hook or just your opening lines of your video, hey guys, how's it going? can be much longer. In fact, I see many channels that their whole audience is there because they wanna spend time with them. And therefore, a minute and a half intro works just fine. So when you're answering the question for your own audience, is hook versus intro versus should I do anything? What should I do in the first 30 seconds of my video? Really, the answer is why are they there and how can I show the audience that they are in the exact right place within the first 30 seconds? If you do that well, you've got a solid start for any piece of content on YouTube. You are awesome and I think it is back to you, Rob. First of all, go back to the beginning of this video and also the example beginning of one of Nate's videos and answer me this. Are those video intros or video hooks? Second of all, the Brickaniac is probably feeling like a million dollars now because he's been featured in one of our videos. And finally, the vidIQ community as a whole has contributed to the data necessary for Nate to share some very sage words about video intros. And all of that is how you build an audience that keeps on coming back. You know I like to waffle on about return viewers all the time and this is a perfect illustration of why. Nate hasn't created any viral content, he simply built an audience over time, consistently reinforcing core values and making sure the audience feels valued. And when they do, they keep on coming back. So YouTube tests the channel with new audiences and they keep coming back as well. If a viewer, irrespective of whether or not they've subscribed to your channel, returns to your content, you've got them hooked. And when they come back, you wanna feed them, you wanna nourish them, you wanna to talk to them, you want to make them the center of your channel. That's what I've learned from Nate and channel makers recently. But you know what? He's also learned some stuff from us. And if you wanna find out what that is and check out his channel, then do make sure to watch the video over here. More Nate Rose? Yeah, go on. Wait, why, 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 why? There's no reason. As soon as you get that feeling, people are out of there. They're gone.